The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning, warning him sternly, then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter the town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Leprosy was a horrible thing. Today we can treat it with antibiotics. If you catch it soon enough, it's easily treated with our insight into modern medicine. But that was not the case for the ancients. Leprosy meant you were destined for isolation. Sadly, this last year, many people have tasted that isolation due to the coronavirus. It really has placed us in a, play, in a situation and circumstance that helps us understand to some degree how difficult it is to live in isolation. We take so many things for granted. I don't know if, you, I don't know if this was the internet or where I saw it, but there was a little baby that's like a toddler toddling along and walking towards its mother. This was near the beginning of the pandemic. And the child stopped and sneezed and coughed, and it showed the mother running away. <laughs> In other words, afraid to get the coronavirus. The greatest preparation, as I said before, is being in the state of grace. Because as Catholics, as Christians, when Jesus is a part of our life, we really do not need to be afraid of anything. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be prudent. I hope that the trends continue. It's looking good. Nationwide, Indiana in particular, it looks like it's starting to slow. And my hope and prayer is that it continues down this path. But it's interesting to ask ourselves, what is the Lord trying to teach us? What really is he trying to show us in all of this? And what we need to do is we need to deepen our trust in Jesus. In the gospel, it's somewhat interesting and it's hard to know historical context and all the rest. I mean, I'm not sure how much you know about the history of the priesthood during this time Jesus came. But it's interesting to note that you may have heard of the Maccabees. And the Maccabees had recaptured and reoriented and got everything going again. So... The temple was moving, everything was moving, everything was good. But sadly, if you look at the political situation, the priests got all their power back, and they were getting politically connected. They were very, very much connected to the politics of the day. And you read the story, you see that. They, they talked to Herod, they talked to Pilate. They had a, a relationship with the priests. And some would argue, in the, the show Jesus of Nazareth, if you'll recall, there was a character there that showed himself to be kind of a collaborator with the Romans and doing all these difficult things and all the, all the rest. But what does Jesus do? So a lot of people understood. In fact, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And remember and recall the red dragon chased the child into Egypt and was pursuing the mother. Recall that Jesus had to go into Egypt because of Herod the Great. The red dragon is an allusion to the Herodian dynasty. The red dragon with seven heads and ten horns was talking about Herod and his descendants. 
and the ten horns in the same period of the seven Herodian leaders, there were ten Roman Caesars. Well, in that story, it talks about the whore of Babylon. And it talks about how the whore of Babylon, it makes an allusion to the corrupt city, Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Huh? Jesus wasn't crucified in Sodom and Egypt. He was crucified in Jerusalem. The whore of Babylon, arguably among the fathers of the church, many saw the whore of Babylon as corrupt Jerusalem. They had been co-opted by Herod and the Romans. And that's exactly what they did. They, they, were, they were setting up Jesus for his destruction. So there was a lot of corruption in the high priesthood at this time. Sad to see we see dimensions of corruption in our own church today, right? So at Jesus' time, it was no different. And isn't it interesting that Jesus says to the leper after he cures him, show yourself to the priests. That will be proof for them. Because as corrupt as they may have been, they still were, were involved with the faith. You know, there, there are certainly, in my, for me, I won't name names, but I'm certainly scandalized by some of our leaders in the church. And so we pray for them who aren't faithful to the church's teaching on sexual morality or whatever it might be, or are staunch defenders of life, whatever it might be. We pray for them. But what's, what I found to be fascinating in this reading is that Jesus still sent them to the priests. Because Jesus honored the priesthood. Even if individuals within that priesthood were corrupt, Jesus still realized that this was God, God's mechanism to bring about the glory of salvation. And that's what our church is. We have the mechanism of drawing the world to the Christ. We make present his very self at every Mass. When I say, pray brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Father. We all have suffering to go through. Tragic death last week of the 32-year-old car accident. Difficult things. It causes us to ask questions. Why does God allow this suffering? Maybe we don't understand it. But whatever that is, we can unite all our questions, all our doubts, all, all the, the challenges that we face. And when we offer Mass, we come to offer Mass and lay it on the altar and offer it to God as an act of trust, even though we may fail to grasp why. Did you ever see those infomercials, you know, like the, the granite stone frying pan that you can cook plastic in it and it won't stick, you know? All these incredible things. And imagine you buy one of those things. I think I bought the copper one thing or whatever. You know, I, I think it was, I didn't buy it. I didn't do the, do the online thing, but it was like at Walmart or something. It worked pretty good for, you know, a while. It's still not bad. It's still okay. All right. But if that, if you got that pan, that granite diamond pan or whatever that is, and, and it works really, really good, and it works really good for a couple years, are you going to mention that to anybody? Are you going to say, man, I can't believe this. Man, I, I fried up some plastic, and it was just like the commercial. It didn't stick. When you say, like, wow, this is amazing. Truth in advertising, that's a novel concept. The gospel gives us joy, gives us hope. When's the last time you shared that with someone? When's the last time you invited them to come back to church? Don't underestimate the impact that you can have. Not by beating it over their heads, but recognizing that we have a God of joy and mercy and healing. And he sent them to the priests. Most likely Jesus knew they might not have been all that great. But he still sent them to the church because that's how God used us to do that. You've heard me say this before. The Catholic Church is not a Christian denomination. 
It is the Christian church. It's a Jewish denomination. We fulfill the Jewish scriptures. That's why I wear the funny clothes. This thing, it's the Levitical priesthood, this, this, this alb, the stole underneath here. It comes from the Jewish prayer shawl. And the outer garment is what the senators wore in Rome. God joined the Roman, the pagans, and the Jews together with a system of roads, communication, and law that could take the good news to every corner of the world. At that time when Jesus came, the Roman emperor had like 60% of control over the civilized world. And within 300 years, the gospel converted the emperor, and he used the full force of the empire with a system of law, roads, communication, to share that good news. And God invites us to be part of that today, to fill our church, to bring people back after this wretched pandemic. We have a team, it's called the Implementation Team. We're working on trying to come up with ideas and ways which can work together, kind of improve communication with the school, all these different things. And one of the people said, you know, we were asking, like, what would you want? And I, I think he said it, it well. He'd want everybody to know the joy that he has. That's what our faith gives us. Joy. Whenever we encounter the truth, it's always accompanied with joy. When we know it and experience it, when you find somebody who truly loves you and you love them, that's joy. When you've struggled long and hard on a math problem that's incredibly complex and you get the right answer, that's joy. I know Sue in the office and Lori, when they go through the books and try and rectify the books and it comes down to the penny and they get the right answer with down to the penny, <laughs> that's joy. Because truth is truth. And it's always accompanied with joy. And Jesus is Lord. That's the truth way more important than any diamond gold frying pan that really works, okay? Let's pray that this Lent will help us know the joy of Christ in deep and profound ways. Because if you know his joy, I guarantee you, you cannot help but share it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may continue to manifest and reveal the saving power of Christ to our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they all work for lasting peace and mutual respect for human dignity and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Lent begins this Wednesday, we may truly strive to draw closer to Christ and his church and draw others to the fullness of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Sensalewski and McCarman families, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our personal intentions found in our parish book 
and that our parish may prepare disciples to love the true, the good, and the beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and are replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, they may come to know the fullness of God's joy in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an end to the pandemic, and for all those who strive to keep us healthy and secure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 